Come on and stand to your feet. Is anybody ready to praise the name of Jesus this morning? Turn to the person next to you, give him a big hug, say, I'm so happy you're here. You know, this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we worship you today. Jesus, we worship you for you are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all honor. God, our eyes are focused on you. God, nothing else matters in this moment. In this moment, God, we look up to the hills where our help comes from. And we say that our help comes from the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of the stars, the creator of the sky, and that same creator, Yahweh God, knows me by name, and he holds my name in the palm of his hands. So you, Jesus Christ, the only one, we look to you, and we lift our eyes to you, and we say, you are so worthy. Can you just take a second and say, you are so worthy, Jesus. You are so worthy. Have a song in my heart. We're just going to start with this thing. Sing then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. How great Thou art. Your voice then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. Oh, how great thou art! How great thou art.
dancing in valleys, places of defeat. I'm walking on dry bones, death has no hold on me. I'm standing in the fire, but I can't feel the heat. In the middle of the battle, I'll seek for victory. Because I know who I am. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. In Jesus' name, I can do all things.
morning.
sing, Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Focus on him tonight. We give you all. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be blessed. You're our final.
God today. Hallelujah. The Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest. Come rest on us. Just one last time. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. The Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's not just a free expression of a redeemed people's praise, but there is an anointing to set people free. That's what the Holy Spirit brings. That's who He is. That's what He offers to us as believers. As we, in this moment, before we move forward, and we have some fun things we're going to do today, including praying for children. I want to pray for our country, and this Tuesday we'll be celebrating our Independence Day. I think it's 244 years, and as we thank God and appreciate um, the history of this remarkable country, we are in a place of needing God. And so our country is having a birthday, but we really need a new birth. We really need a, to be born again. And the Bible says this in 2 Chronicles 7.14. Solomon was having this amazingly beautiful dialogue with God and God was showing him the patterns of life and, and God said, when people fall away from me, you can always return. And he said this, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their own wicked way, then I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. God says the turning point is not when politicians change, it's when the church prays. And God says if my people will do it, and it's important, the, the emphasis in that verse was let's make sure that we don't see that the problem is are only in Washington, D.C. or the state capitol or wherever, or wherever, that we as people take accountability and we as the church say, God, forgive us as the church. Forgive me and my family for my complacency, apathy, indifference, and disobedience. God, have mercy upon us. And repentance always initiates a fresh move of the Spirit a revival from God. Father, we lift up our country to you. We lift it up in humble gratitude and deep prayer and deep contrition. And we ask you, God, to heal our land. We repent for the sins of our country. We repent for the sins of the church. And God, I repent for the sins of my life and family. And we know, God, that you said you would hear and you would forgive and you would heal. So, Lord, we believe that the greatest spiritual awakening in American history is, is, is ready, is, is percolating, is bubbling up. And we contend for that, God, and we believe for that. We pray your kingdom come in our country, God, in Washington, D.C., President Joe Biden, his cabinet, Vice President Harris, all congressmen, all senators, all Supreme Court justices, all federal agencies and employees. We pray, God, your kingdom come in this country. Lord, as things are exposed and our eyes are opened, Lord, don't let the hope of what you can do be removed because we see the failure of what people have done. We believe, God, you are not done in this country. And we thank you by faith for doing great things. We lift up our state, Governor Hobson, all of the government leaders in this state, God, and we pray your kingdom come, you will be done in this country, in this state, and in this city. And Lord, we thank you. We praise you for your goodness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 
I had a remarkable, I was on a 40-day fast uh, 20 years ago. I had a remarkable visitation from God. One of the things the Lord showed me, America would go through a tough time, but that God would heal it and America would soar again. We're going to come out of this season. The season is not over. Even the intensity of the season is not, not over. But the end result is a spiritual awakening. And that's what God's after. That's what we need to be after. Amen. Yes, Lord, thank you for what you're doing. Now, for everyone here, as we talked about liberty, if you say, Pastor, I'm, there's something in my life or my family or my world that I'm believing God to heal, to restore, to touch, to change. Would you just lift up your hands because the Holy Spirit's here. He's here in you. He's here with us. He's here among us. If someone has their hand raised around you, congregation, would you help me pray for our, our sisters and brothers? Father, we pray for our friends. We speak life to them and healing by the name of Jesus. Lord, you know what it is. You know where it is. You know the answer. So God, we speak life and grace and healing to these precious ones now in Christ's name. Heal those that are hurting. Thank you, God. You're a God of miracles. Strengthen those who are weary, God. Deliver those who are suffering. And God, we pray for family members. We pray for things extended beyond this moment, this room that people are carrying. We believe for miracles there too, God. This past week, my... My dearest friends, Pastor Benny Prez's oldest daughter, Isabella, was rushed to the hospital with, what she have, honey? Sepsis. 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 And, uh, you know, it's, sepsis can be a really serious issue. And in a remarkable turnaround, instead of staying in the hospital two weeks, she was there less than two days. Jesus completely healed her. She's home. We had Pastor Joan Kavanaugh Biggs, her grandson Gunner, was in the hospital. And the doctors said he's going to die. And supernaturally, God raised him from the dead. If he was posting on Facebook yesterday. And our dear friends, um, Chris and Lorraine Gilbert, their brother-in-law, Brian, who has been here to this church, now they live in San Diego, Brian and Katie, was diagnosed with cancer at a very young age, stage four cancer. And when he went to go have the surgery last week, they opened him up, they looked and looked and looked in every organ. They actually spent five hours looking for the cancer and it was totally gone. Not a trace of it. The doctor said, this is truly a miracle. And they had been standing and believing for that. So I am just so excited about the miracles God is doing today. Not just yesterday, not in the past. He does miracles today. He can do a miracle for you today, whatever you're believing for. And Brian is a fairly high ranking uh, naval officer. And so the testimony, when the doctors use the word miracle, which is a rarity, it just, it just gives such a reverberation of Jesus. So can't wait to see all the lives touched because I know we were praying and of course my friends at Awaken Church were praying and so it's just great stuff. Hey, a big smile on your face. Find three or four people and tell them Jesus loves you like crazy. Hey, if you're visiting Church for the Nations this morning, we're honored to have you as our guest. I am Michael. This is my beautiful wife, Mary. And we, we're honored to have you as our guest today. We've been praying for you, and there's a way of connecting. We'll talk about that in the announcements in a moment. I want to welcome our live streaming and online friends. God bless you guys from however, whenever, wherever you're watching. 
This morning is our quarterly uh, blessed Sunday to pray for babies, our baby dedication Sunday. If you have a child that you would like dedicated, a baby or a young child, please uh, bring them forward. Uh, no, no children over 45, but other than that, uh, bring them forward. and We'd be honored to pray for you and your beautiful children today. Nice looking, looking, looking good, looking good. Look at all these beautiful children. Who, who do we have here? Cruz and Kingston. Hi guys. Hi guys. Man, you guys look sharp today. What's your name? Andres. Andres? Adrian? What's this? Elijah. Elijah. Hi, Elijah. The beautiful family. Hi, Charlene. Hi, honey. Who's this? Zoe. Hi, Zoe with the flag. Hey, how you doing today? We're so glad you're here. Hello. Who's this? Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Hi. You know the, you know him? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful family. Hi, who's this? Oh. Josiah, beautiful. Look at the flat of that. Hi. Hi, Isaiah. Give them the gift of playing the guitar. Who is this? Xavius? Hi, Xavius. How you doing? Yeah. Hi, honey. Hi. Hi, guys. Who, who are these angels? Bella? Amara. Amara and Bella. Beautiful. Hi, guys. What's her names? Kali. Kelly? Kellen? What's your name? Natalia. Natalia? Christopher. Christopher. Beautiful children. All these handsome, beautiful kids. Hey, guys. Who, who, who do we have here? Caroline. <laughs> yeah. goodness. How, how old? Um, 13. 13, 13 weeks. Wow. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> are, are you you're borrowing the baby today? What's, what's going on? Yeah. yeah. So what are the dreams of their moms uh, gave birth to this child and this amazing couple has brought him here. Thank you guys. Yeah, we're, we're honored you're with us today. Up here, Jeremiah. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. Well, we got half the Bible here today. Uh, 
Thank you, moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. Thank you for bringing your children to the house of God. And, and we, we really believe that there is a sacredness in this moment that anything we give to God, God takes that very seriously. And in the Bible, you know, Christ was brought back to the temple. When he came to the temple, two people were there, and they prophesied over him. He's just a week old. He's, he's come back to be circumcised. But Anna and Simeon both prophesied over him. And there was a special moment. And the Bible talks about a, a, a young baby named Samuel being brought to God and dedicated to the house of God. As moms and dads, we recognize the miracle of life that God really entrusts us to be temporary stewards over these children, really, that belong to God. But I promise you, in your relationship with these kids, God's 100% involved, engaged, and committed to help you. The Bible says that children are a heritage of the Lord. They're a blessing from God. And they are God's gift to this, our families and gift to this world. When, when the, uh, the pandemic began a couple of years ago, I remember the first dedication we had that summer, and you could feel some of the trepidation in the, the moms and dads having a ch child in, in the middle of all that. And the Lord told me to tell them that these were giant slaying children. They were world conquerors, and there was a special grace upon them. And I just want to declare that over your kids today, that there's a grace, an anointing. There's something special on their life from God that's really a gift from God. The Bible says for us as stewards, as guardians, and as parents, that we are to train up our children in the way that they should go. Of course, that means introducing them to God, but also God gives us kind of a, a specific guideline, a specific direction for the path of their own individual lives, their own gifts, their own purposes, their own calling. God helps us find the uniqueness of every child. And a couple of things in closing, Jesus was ministering to kids and the disciples got upset and Jesus said, D don't chase children away from, away from me, bring children to me. He said, for the kingdom of God is like these children. And then he said, children's angels are always before the Lord. And the picture was that God had assigned to children angelic protection. And then Christ gave this warning, if you harm one of these innocent ones, it'd be better to have a stone thrown, you know, a rope around your neck with a stone and thrown into the ocean. That there is a harsh view from heaven on people that hurt children. And so God's engaged in the protection of your children with you. And lastly, this, when Mary and I had four kids, the first two children we had, Matthew and Melody, we, we, our family is like divided in two parts. Uh, the first part, when we were really poor and when we were just a little poor. And when we were really poor, I had no sh insurance. We had no, you know, everything. But when, when we had nothing but love in our home, God met the need of our kids every time we had a need. I promise you, God will find a way. He'll find a way to help you and your children. And I just declare every medical need, every school need, every athletic need, every scholarship, every blessing, every favor, every open door they will ever need. I thank you, God, for blessing them. Staff, would you help me? Church, would you stretch your love toward these children and these families? Father, we pray for all of these beautiful families now in Jesus' name. And God, we pray, we dedicate these children to you. We declare, God, that for such a time as this, they've been brought to this world, this generation, and this kingdom. There's an unusual uh, grace upon this younger son, younger child, for leadership. People are going to be drawn to them. Great thinker, great athlete, great things upon both these kids. God, thank you for this beautiful family dressed to the max. We bless them all and declare your kingdom and your will be done in all their lives in Jesus' name. And thank you, God. You know, um, God's given you great faith and God's proud of you for standing in faith for your family against kind of all odds sometimes. The Lord is with you to help you. We just declare your sons are for signs and wonders, and God's going to do amazing things in the earth through all of your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we thank you for these angels. We bless them in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, for this beautiful baby. We bless her and declare your grace, your kingdom, your purpose. In the name of Jesus, all the days of her life. You know, um, God, there's something about God keeping a promise with you about this child. 
it's, it, there's a miracle connection to it. Every day of your life, she's going to bring you joy because she's a walking miracle. And the testimony of God is going to just increase more and more and more as she gets older. Amen. Lord, thank you for the grace upon this angel. We bless you and declare your great kingdom. Your will be done in Jesus' name. There's a heritage, godly heritage. It's increased in your children. And the Lord's proud of you. We're handling kind of an unexplainably difficult season. But I just want to say this. Your children are going to change the world. So, God, thank you for these sons and this daughter. We bless them all in the name of Jesus. Declare your kingdom come and your will be done in all their lives. We declare, God, that they were raised up for such a time as this to be champions in the earth for your kingdom. God, thank you for this world changer and history maker. I say we bless him and declare your great grace over him. Thank you, God, for all you have in store for him. All, I just want to, the cool thing is, it's like, I saw like a trio of prophetic voices just pouring into him everywhere he turned, like things being spoken to him. There was such, God's building like a library of destiny in him. Just keep it up, you guys are awesome. You guys, thank you for Isaiah. We bless him. We bless this chunk of joy in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, for your hand upon his life. Thank you, God, for, for that, you, that you brought him to this family, to this mother, and to this world for a reason and a purpose. And thank you, God, for all that you have for his life. We bless him and declare life and grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God, for your great grace, your great love, and your great care for these angels. We bless them today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your great care for this princess. We bless her in the name of Jesus. God, thank you for your great grace upon these beautiful children. And, Lord, we declare, God, that they are, as we dedicate them to you, we declare, God, that they're going to change the world and do great things in their lifetime. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for every life. Thank you, God, for every decision mom and dad will have to make, giving them wisdom and guidance directing their steps and guiding their path in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, thank you. Lord, we bless all, we bless the gang here. The gang. Uh, all, all four of these angels, we bless them, God, and declare your kingdom come. Your will be done in their life. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a big thing, like a turning point. And your children are so blessed because, because you've had a breakthrough. And something has happened in your life that's opened the, it's like opened the door of heaven to their lives. And amazing things, it's like you're, they're going to benefit from the victories you've won as parents. God, thank you for blessing these angels in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, for this princess. We bless her in Jesus' name. Yeah, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for all you have for her. We bless her in the name of Jesus. Have, have you met her? Yeah, she's really Yeah. Jeffrey James, we bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing this beautiful child. In the name of Jesus, thank you, God, for blessing this chunk of loving in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, for all that you have. All that you, it's, it, it's so interesting, the dynamics of your family. It's like so many gifts poured into one life. From, from both sides and going to bring so much joy because people say, wow, there's so much there. It's like the continual d discovery of new gifts or new expressions of life. It's going to be amazing what there's something special happening there. But we thank you. We bless this baby's mother at the Dream Center and we declare this baby God that you've, you've protected, preserved and promised great things for this life, in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, God, for your hand upon this angel, in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, a big, a big storm is over. It's a time of not just rest, it's a time of breakthrough. It's a time of restoration, and God's proud of you for not quitting. And I declare over you that God's going to show off in this season. Through, through your story and this child in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hey, would you thank these moms and dads for bringing their beautiful children to church? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you for letting us pray for you. We have a gift for you. Make sure you get it in the lobby. I think a little Bible and a, 
a little book. God bless all of you. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you. Yeah, make sure you pick up your little Bibles and your Bible story and your dedication certificate. The staff wanted me to remind you on the way out today in the North Lobby. Oh, and in the North Lobby, hand me some of those things. We are celebrating, you know how I love parties, and we're celebrating 4th of July, big time here. So we've got fans and all kinds of stuff. Coda, can I borrow your stuff? Okay. Where's your sunglasses? <laughs> okay. So these are all free for the kids. So... There we go. And we've also got popsicles for everyone. So we believe in parties. We believe in celebrating. So pick up your free stuff on the way out, okay? How many are happy Pastor Mike is back? Yes. He's back, and he's better than ever, and he's healing. And I'm so excited, you know, and I know you are too. So today's a great day. Thank you for all your prayers for him. The surgery went well. The doctor said he's healing incredibly. So yay. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> and thank you for allowing us to pray for all the kids. You know, it's really important. Thank you for your patience. I know we have a, had a lot of them today, but it's very important to do this. And just thank you out there for being kind and gracious. So it's our generosity time. And I know you're all excited about that. And yes, some of you are. OK. It's good to have Tamara here. We love you. Don't get to see her very often. Skinner's daughter, we love you so much. Um, and Miss Charlene turned 82 last week. I just want to say happy birthday. She's back. She's been not well, but now she's back in church. So I just look at her, and I just get so happy. You know, I just get so happy. But anyway, as you're giving your gifts, um, just remember the Lord takes pleasure. The Bible says the Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, which are you all. That, mean God, that means God is delighted to bless you and wants to bless you just the way I take pleasure when my kids are blessed, when my son's business is blessed. I take pleasure in that. God takes pleasure in blessing you guys. It's truly really true. We, we all should have a heart that has boundaries of contentment, that we don't have an unending you know, desire for things or for whatever it is. But we also should have a big desire for blessings beyond our needs so we can bless others. That's right. So we can be a blessing. So we can sow into the nations, sow into yeah. church for the nations, sow into hurting people's lives. Thank you for standing with us because we are making a difference as a church. Yeah. We're impacting our city. We're loving Jesus and we're loving this region. And we can only do so because of the generosity and the obedience of so many folks here. Thank you for standing with us and obeying the leadership of the Holy Spirit in your own story and your own life. Hey, as you give, would you please watch this week's announcements? Thank you. Hey, CFTM family, welcome. If you are new, we would love to connect with you. Fill out our connect card in the seat pocket in front of you and drop it in the offering bucket as it passes by. If you're watching online, welcome. Connect with us using our chat or on our website at cftn.com now. Here's what we have going on at CFTN. One Day Prayer is our prayer experience where we hold a prayer meeting from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and we'd love to invite you to our next One Day Prayer event on July 8th. Feel free to stop by anytime from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. for this amazing experience. My name is India. I'm in my first semester of SOM right now. And um, what I've taken away from it is I've learned my identity in Christ. And I've also learned that I actually have authority and to not be fearful. So if you want to sign up, I highly encourage it. Um, I'm really excited for what the second semester has to offer. So yes, sign up, it's gonna be amazing. On Friday, July 7th, from 7 to 8.30 p.m., the School of Ministry will be holding a worship and prophetic night in the SOM room. If you want to encounter the Lord and experience the School of Ministry, we'd love for you to join us. If you'd like to sign up for the School of Ministry, go to som.cftn.com. Fall semester starts Monday, August 7th. Sunday, July 16th, Tom Hammond will be joining us for Prophetic Night. Our Prophetic Nights are always packed, full of worship, and the Spirit is moving, so we would love for you to be there. Hey, you guys. I'm Dee Smith. I've been serving upstairs in Kit Nation for two years now. 
Really, I believe that's something that we're called to do as, as Christians is to serve and to love others. Uh, really, the best way that you can explain this is through a, a story of personal experience where two girls came in and one of them was having a hard time leaving her mom. Uh, the other girl went over to her and gave her a hug and took her by the hand and just led her over to sit down with her. And that really showed me uh, the heart of the father and just really what it means to, to bring others into uh, the love of Christ. So if you're interested in joining Upstairs to Serve, uh, go to cftn.com slash serve, and we hope to serve with you soon. Thanks. Thank you so much, CFTN, for being a part of our service. We want to hear your miracle story. Share it with us on our social media or online at cftn.com slash connect. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at CFTNAZ. Enjoy this awesome message and the rest of service. Volunteers, there's hundreds of them that serve here, and thank you, Dee, and everyone that's serving our children's ministry. So many great things happening there. It was Pastor Ruben's birthday on Wednesday. Big happy birthday to him. He's... One of the leaders, he and Moses, Moises lead our worship nation, and he's a great gift to us going on 15 years here. What a blessing. A, uh, I'm continuing actually finishing a series on the monumental three, faith, hope, and love. Today, speaking on God's love never fails. A couple humorous things. Message Bible, Mama, I'm hungry. Amplified Bible. Mommy, I am hungry, famished, starving. NIV, Mother, I am hungry. King James Version, Henceforth, let it be known unto thee, birth giver, that my belly consists of emptiness. I posted this next one a few weeks ago with mixed results. Husbands, if your wife does something wrong, just explain how your mom used to do it. She will appreciate your advice and strive to do it more like your mother did. Tell me how that goes. My kid, <clears throat> I feel like you're always making up rules and stuff. Me, like what? Kid, like if I don't clean my room, a portal will take open and take me to another dimension. Me, well, that's what happened to your older brother. The kid, what older brother? Me. Exactly. First Corinthians 13 closes with the summation of the previous verses by saying, now abide these three, faith, hope, and love. And then there's an elevation of the superior one of the three, love. And the greatest is love. So in the kingdom of God, the greatest virtue, the greatest grace, the greatest cultural dynamic is love. Love is the culture of the kingdom of God. We're going to talk about that today. Jesus in John 13 said this. He's bringing a kingdom, a new kingdom. And he's teaching about it. And he said, here's the culture of my kingdom. A new commandment I give to you. We think in rabbinic law, rabbinic Jewish tradition, there's over 500 laws. They would become from the Pentateuch mostly. But through traditions, there would be moral laws, spiritual laws, religious laws about pleasing God. And Jesus said, I got one rule. Here it is. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another just like I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this love will all men know that you're my disciples if you love one another. Jesus said the most attractive witness that you could be as a community of faith to any place in the world is to love each other. The whole world is looking for a loving, healthy, holy, happy community of families and life and people. And the church has the chance to show them that community by our love for each other. Now we're called to love God, we're called to love the world, but Jesus said, hey, just love other Christians. Begin there. Begin there. And if you will do that and do that well, 
it will draw people and witness, and they'll say, we know they're Christians by their love, by their love. 1 John 4 says it like this, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. He that does not love does not know God, for God is love. Both John and Jesus and then the Apostle Paul all used a different word for love than was known previously. In fact, we think that Christ either adapted an unused word or created a word for love called agape. It's not found in history before the time of the church, before the time of Christ. In the Greek language, there's like a, it's a language of science, and there can be a really specific meaning for things. Like in our language, we have one word for love, it's just love. It carries a broad and vast meaning of, of various things. But in the Greek language, there's a love for friendship. It's called philios, brotherly love. There's a family love, storio, the kind of love you have for siblings and other relatives. There's sexual love. And then finally, Christ shows up and said, none of those things mean what I have to show you. I want to introduce you to agape love. So agape love is selfless love. It is unilateral love. I love you. I don't care if you love me back. It is a giving love. Rick Renner, a great Greek scholar, came up with this really beautiful definition. He said this, agape is when a person looks at another person and sees so much value and beauty in that person, they then become compelled to love them. And so Agape means you see value in people, you see beauty in people, even when it's in obvious, even when it's not apparent, even when it's covered by sin. And the Bible says that God so agape the world, saw value and beauty in a sinful, fallen, rebellious world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in that son would not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus is the proof of God's love for mankind. God loves sinners. God loves saints. The only difference between a sinner and a saint is one has come home and one's trying to make it home. And God loves people. And you want to be on God's side. Stop hating people. I lost people there. So God wants us to love each other. It's the kingdom of God. Love is the culture of the kingdom of God. Jesus said, if you do that, in fact, in the book of Romans, Paul said this, love is the fulfillment of the law. Every other commandment is satisfied by a living a life of love. All the other things are fulfilled by being a person filled with love. We're never more like Jesus than when we love people. Thank you, sister. 1 Corinthians 13 now gives us a beautiful biblical definition of agape in the previous 12 verses. Let's read it together. Verse 1 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not agape love, I become sounding brass or clanging cymbals. So just imagine me clanging a cymbal here, bang, bang, bang. It becomes an irritation. There's a discord to it. Without the symphonic balance of the rest of the instruments, it doesn't have beauty. And God says, I don't care if you speak in tongues. It means nothing to me if you're still gossiping in English. <laughs> so, it's, it's a beautiful thing. There's not a diminishing of the gift of tongues in this chapter. There's simply this. If you thank your spiritual because you have a gift... But if that gift is absent the presence of love, that gift means nothing to God. Verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy, understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, two important things, by the way, prophecy and faith, so that I could move mountains, but if I don't, but, but if I have not love, I am nothing. <laughs> My... Father, unexpectedly, I've had a pretty exciting week. I don't know about you. Surgery last Wednesday, Tuesday night, 
the night before surgery, my father unexpectedly and suddenly passed away at 86 years old. I appreciate the faith of my father. I had a wonderful time with him on Father's Day. I'm so glad on that Sunday we had that time together. Um, but my, my parents introduced us to prophets early. If there was a prophetic person in America, they came to our church here in New Life Chapel in Phoenix. And um, to me, it was good. It was good exposure. But, but there came to be kind of a pattern, especially in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, of prophets. And um, you couldn't find a prophet that, that wasn't harsh, wasn't rude, wasn't unloving, unpastoral, and... And, and somehow um, not, not very nice. And so all the pastors would say about these prophets, well, that's just the temperament of a prophet. You know, like Jeremiah, like Elijah, you know, killing kids because they said he was bald. That's just a tip. And, and I'm like 13 years old, and I said, no. Stop blaming bad behavior on a spiritual gift. That, that's not the temperament of a prophet. That's a temperament of a jerk. <laughs> I, I did a big uh, prophetic conference. And, you know, they're waiting for, give us the secrets of prophecy. Here's the first secret. Don't be a jerk. <laughs> Don't be unloving and expect your gift to give you cover with God. God says, it means nothing to me if there's no love in you when that gift flowed from you. Ouch. Faith, kind of important. Prophecy, kind of important. Next verse, verse 3. If I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, a good thing, by the way, twice in our lives, Mary and I gave away everything but our children. She's holding them back. You're not giving these kids away. Okay. And though I give my body to be burned, that would be martyrdom. But if I do not have love, it profits me nothing. Can you imagine dying as a martyr but living a unlo... <laughs> if you die as a martyr but lived an unloving life, your martyrdom did not mean anything to God. That's kind of an ouch. If you give away all your stuff but don't live a life of love valuing people, honoring people, ah, means nothing to God. Okay, now let's talk about the definition of love, what love looks like. Love suffers long. So love is long-suffering, it's patient, it's enduring. Love is kind. Well, Pastor, how can I be loving? Be kind to someone. You want to shock people in 2023 in America? Be kind. Come on, when you're ordering your Big Mac, be kind to the girl behind this counter. She's sorry. She's only making $8 an hour. Don't scream at her. Don't throw your coffee back. Don't, do, don't curse at someone. Don't get upset because things are taking longer. Be, shock people with kindness. Shock them. Just, just an idea. Love does not envy. Love is not jealous of people. If you can't celebrate someone's success, it's because you're not walking in love. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Remember the, the puffer fish? Love does not behave rudely. Oh, God. I had a little dialogue with God uh, recently and I'm being challenged in my love life by politicians recently. Politicians that want to hurt children. They want to surgically mutilate children or chemically castrate children, underage children. And my first instinct is, kill them all, Jesus. Kill them all. Let the angels. And 
the Bible and God's lover. Is that really Christ like Michael? Can you love someone that you have a severe disagreement with? It's not that they're evil people, but that's an evil thing they believe. Can you love people even when they're wrong? Oh, yeah, I, I, I'll try to. But still, if you want to kill them, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I, 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 I had to work through some things. Our own governor here, our president did some things. And I'm like, what? There, there's no science in that. There's, what are they doing? What are they doing? They're after a generation of children. And I'm getting, I'm getting feisty. And so I'm determined to not hate people that behave hatefully toward me or that do things that I see as biblically immoral or evil. Now that's a challenge for Michael Meaton. Okay? But I'm going to win it. I'm going to win it. Well, I pray for them. I bless them. And I'm praying for you know, God to change hearts. Okay, okay, enough of me. Love rejoices in the truth. Love can bear anything, any burden, any weight. It bears all things. Love believes all things. Faith is easy to the heart filled with love. Love hopes all things. We'll read that in just a minute. Love endures all things. Love never fails. What a great example. So here's what love looks like. It's patient. One of the ways of looking at that verse, six of the fruit of the Spirit were just described as attributes of love. Galatians 5.22 says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, then joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, patience, self-control. So the fruit of the Spirit, singular in the Greek, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Here's what love looks like. It's joyous. It's peaceful. It's kind. It's good. It's faithful. It's patient. It's self-controlled. The attributes of love. Like one fruit with different parts of the fruit. So when I have love, I have access to all the other virtues of the fruit of the Spirit. So God says, my love is in you. Here's what Romans 5, 5 says. Uh, hope does not disappoint. I preached on that a couple weeks ago. Why? Because the love of God is poured out in our hearts abundantly through the Holy Spirit who's given to us. When the Holy Spirit moved in, he brought in heaven's love. And hope flourishes in the heart filled with heaven's love. Hope flourishes. You know your heart is healthy when it dreams again. It dreams again because love has healed its wounds. So God says, I'm going to help you understand. Here's what love looks like. Here's what love is a... A, a behavioral definition of love. And the culmination was, was this. Love never fails. Love is the atomic bomb of the kingdom of God. When you love, you win. When you forgive, you win. When you're kind, you win. When you're patient, you win. When you're not rude, you win. Come on. Yeah, be strong, just don't be rude. Come, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking. Don't let... you. You can have boundaries and still be a loving person. You can be strong and still be kind. So, so God says, do these things. This is what love looks like. And love never fails. Amen. So, so we, we, have a, we have a chance to live this out, walk this out, be a part of it in our own, our own journey. Ephesians 5 verse 1 says this, as precious children imitate God, be imitators of God as dear children. You know, uh, the dedication of Sunday is always my favorite Sunday. We had the cutest kids ever. And one of the secrets about parenting is this, children do what you do, not what you say. My uh, beloved father who passed away 10 days ago, 12 days ago, so at my first memory, th th this, is, this is bad. I can say it now that he's dead. <laughs> that came out bad. I can spill the beans, baby. No. 
the, my first childhood memories, maybe two and a half, three, were in Marshalltown, Iowa, where I was born, and my dad's not saved yet. He's in the kitchen table with his friends. He's got a beer in one hand, a cigarette in the other hand. He says, Mickey, they called me Mickey. Mickey, come here. I came, you know, over there and says, if I ever catch you smoking or drinking, I'm going to beat the H-E double hobby sticks out of you. <laughs> Everyone just laughing. <laughs> I looked at him. It seared into my mind what he was doing, not what he said. The children are great. They're like mirrors of who you are. Now, the good thing about having two people in a family is I can blame most of my kids' dysfunction on their mother's side of the family. I'm like, I, uh, it can't be my side of the family. We don't have any of that stuff. It has to be her side. If she wasn't such an angel, it might work, but, you know, it doesn't really work in our family. Yeah, sure, Dad. Yeah, yeah. like, Mom? Mm. So God helps us in every part of our life Live out this love life by imitating God. How do we imitate God? Verse 2, Ephesians 5, 2. And walk in love. See, see, when you walk in love, you stay away from offense. A person that has determined to walk in love is a person you can't offend. Now, they can have righteous anger. They can have... Uh, but they will not live in a permanent state of offense because love does not allow it. Love does not permit it. Walk in love. The next part of the verse says this. Just like Christ who loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. God says when you walk in love, you smell good. Amen. Brother in the church gave me some Louis Vuitton cologne a few months ago. First thing I did is I Googled how much it cost. <laughs> Holy smokes, I should save this for my grandkids' inheritance. I should. <laughs> and when I put it on, I, this is how shallow I am. When I put it on, I feel better. <laughs> Smelling that, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> when I walk, in love, I smell like Jesus. Wow. That's a pretty good smell. An aroma. Last point. Loved people, love people. Mm. Bless people, bless people, love people, love people. Heal people, heal people. That's how it works. There's a negative side to it, but there's a positive side. And the positive side, when you love people, there's power. So I have an obligation as a believer. I can't love you more than I am loved. Remember the commandment to husbands? Husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church and gave himself for the church. And but the problem with men loving their wives is it's hard to love your wife when you hate yourself. And so the treatment of a wife really becomes a mirror of the identity of the man. Interesting. Romans 8 says this about God's love. Who, what can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, a rhetorical device is put in there. For your sake we're killed all the day long. We're counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all of these things, these hurtful, negative, stress-filled storms of life, we are more than conquerors. Through Jesus who loved us. So to be more than a conqueror means he conquered and I receive his conquest victory. And part of the victory of the conquest of Christ is living in the perpetual arena of his love. When I stay in love, I stay in conquest. When I stay in love, I stay in an overcoming spirit. Ah, next verse. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, or any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a sentence, what a promise, what a verse. Nothing has the power to separate you from God's love. 
So we have an obligation to live personally in the environment of the culture of the kingdom, which is love, because it empowers me to love. Pastor Nathan did a great job last week. I heard even talking about love. We have an obligation to keep in love, experiencing God's love. When I feel unloved as a minister, I'm dangerous to other people. Why? Because the, 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 the toxic parts of that, that experience in me will come out through my ministry. I have an obligation to stay in the continual expression of knowing, believing, and receiving God's love. All of us do. All of us do. Okay? First John says this. In fact, let me read Ephesians 3 first, and then we'll talk about that. I pray, he's, Paul's praying for the church at Ephesus, he prays this. I pray that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length, the depth, the height, to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. What, what a sentence. When God's love is in me, God's glory is in me, God's fullness is in me. I have as much of God's fullness as I have as much as of God's love. Yeah. Pastor, I want power. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can have power, but never have power without love. Why, you'll hurt people. You can have truth. Speak the truth in love. Truth without love always ends up in error. It misrepresents the heart of God. Any kind of ministry does without love. First John 4, continuing verses later on, the last verse, last verses this morning. We have known and we have believed the love that God has for us. We've heard about it, we've received it, and now we believe it. God is love. John uses three metaphors, three great pictures of this. He says God's light, God's life, and God's love. They're all the same thing. But he says, here's how it applies to us. It's love. The light of God is his love. That's who God is. All the other agencies, all the other virtues, all the other great qualities of God emanate from the core of his character, his being, which is love. Yes, he's righteous. Yes, he's holy. Yes, he's omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. He's everything the Bible says he is and more, but we, we know who he is from the Bible. And all of those traits are governed by the superior presence of the greatest controlling aspect of who God is. That's love. Yeah. Thank you for one amen from this Presbyterian congregation. God is love, and he that abides in love abides in God. When I stay in love, I'm staying close to God. Love has been perfected among us this way, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So love, you have to get this, because when I was a boy, I answered um, like 122 elder calls. Like every evangelist, someday stand before God and he will parade on a giant screen every sin of your life for the whole universe to see and I'm like I don't want that I don't want that so I got saved like 84 times to make sure because who, who, love makes me unafraid of going home number two Love makes me bold because I know his heart, I know his nature, and it empowers me to believe his promises and to represent his kingdom. Next verse. There is no phobos, no fear in love, but perfect mature love casts out fear because fear involves torment. He who fears has not been made perfect in love. I was, had my surgery last Wednesday, about a two-hour uh, surgery. And, uh, you know, I was, you know I, I was all okay until they told me I would be awake the whole time. I said, 
What? I want the happy sauce. No, 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 no. We'll numb the area, but you'll be wide awake for two hours. Okay, so my blood pressure went up low. Surgery awake. So my doctor says to me, "Um, you feeling anxious? I said, a a little, sir. He says, me too. (laughs) Now, he, he has a sense of humor. Normally, I could laugh with him. I ain't laughing there. Oh, geez. That, that's funny, dog. I can't wait in two months to laugh at this joke. He plays loud rock and roll music, and he sings to it while he's taking my eyeball apart. And so I'm feeling anxious. I'm hearing things squirm around, lasers, and there's like, Eight people in the room, blah, 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 blah. Quick, quick, they put gas in my eyeball. There's still some gas there. So I got this bracelet, special gas bracelet. And I can't go, I can't go above 500 feet or something like that until the gas drains out. So, so, so I'm feeling anxious on the table. And I appreciate everyone who prayed for me and, and because it's now it's going to be two hours and I'm going to be stinking awake. So... I took out the love bat and started pounding the hell out of my fear. Shut up, 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 shut up. Blood pressure go down, peace, peace, rest, rest. I'm loved, I'm loved, everything's gonna be okay. And then he he do something else. Love, love, love. Quick, hand me this. I heard I heard everything, every voice, every conversation, everything, every instrument, every laser, every sec. Yeah. So I had two hours to learn to conquer my fear. How'd you do? Bad. (laughs) Bad. But I, I, a couple of things. God is never angry at us because we're afraid. He's compassionately sympathetic. You don't have to be afraid because fear torments you. So I I think by the last 15 minutes, I'd I'd won the battle. Of course, I suffered for an hour and 45 minutes. I finally finally won. I'm ready for the altar call and the closing prayer. It's good. It's over. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. And they say, okay, all done. Really? I just finally won. Wilt me away. You know. thank, thank you, Mr. Rock and Roller. My, um, doc, just, just, he's, he's a top doc, really a great doc. He did a great job. I'm not, I'm just, just saying, it, uh, it was unusual. I don't know what life's going to throw at you. H- had me an unusual thing. My father, who we talked for an hour on Sunday. It's great. He talked about all the ministry he wanted to do. He said, 86, I'm, I got 10 more years of ministry. Dad, Dad, go for it. And everything changed. And I had surgery and everything. Life has these complexities in it. If we stay closer to God, his love will always rescue us. When we feel like we're drowning in anxiety, when we feel like we're suffocating in fear, when we feel like disappointment or discouragement was trying to grip us. I feel good. I feel better than I should feel after what I've been through. I know it's people praying. I know God's grace and God's love. But I just want to tell you, whatever life throws at you, love's going to carry you through. The last thing is this. It's a lie in the culture that says the only way you can show someone love is to approve and affirm their behavior. 
No. You can love someone and completely disagree with what they do. Just make sure you don't hate them for doing it. And make sure you never feel you have to, you have to accept what they're doing. The, the, the culture is trying to bend the church into compliance. Accept this or else you don't love us. No. We, we love children too much to accept the horrible demonic strategy that you're unleashing against them. We, we love children too much. But don't be a participant in name calling and assaulting the character of people. Address issues. Stay in love for people. I, I wish I could tell that to my like reformed friends because every week I get like three rebukes you know, coming from, they feel, a whole part of the body of Christ feels empowered to correct every false doctrine. Of course, they got more than the rest of us combined because they perpetually grieve the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Better stop. But they just don't get it. People don't listen to you when you attack them. People listen to you when you love them. You stay in their world, and you help them get closer to Jesus. That's what I'm trying to do. I hope it's working some. Thank you for listening to me today. Please stand your feet. I think I want to be the rock and roll of pastor. Prayer team, if you please join me down front. As we close today, don't forget to get your gift, your sunglasses, and your popsicle, and uh, huh, there's a photo booth, and just all, all kinds of fun stuff. So my, my wife told me I can't complain about the heat. So sure as exciting as getting hot. Yeah. It's just informing you, not complaining. Yeah, it's, she loves the heat. Yeah, pray for me. As we close today, the most important thing in life is knowing Jesus, is having the dynamic of a relationship with God through Jesus. That's why Christ came. That's the proof of God's love. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior, we'd be so tremendously honored to pray with you. If you've been away from God, make today your homecoming Sunday. Make today the day you come back. If you need a healing in your body or your family or your world, or you're just maybe going through a great trial, I'm sorry you're going through that. I have, I have sympathy for you. But let someone pray for you. I had thousands of people praying for me. I felt like I was being carried the last 10 days. It was beautiful. Let someone pray for you today. Today as we close, if you need prayer, would you come join us? But the things that I said, maybe something else. Just for 60 seconds longer, church, would you worship God with those seeking prayer? Come forward. There's no shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. Wonderful week. Stay here as long as you want to. We're going to keep praying and worshiping.
till, till every person that wants prayer receives it. Have a wonderful week, a great 4th of July. Tell someone Jesus loves them like crazy. Don't forget your gifts. God bless you.